Hello, my name is Sean Lambert, and this is Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2. Now, I have started making a few tips and tricks videos, and while I am not the most experienced player, hopefully you can find these useful. What we're going to be talking about today is one of the dreaded concepts, and it's something that um, a new player could really struggle with, and that is managing your air groups not necessarily using your air groups <laughs> because that's maybe a, a more involved topic and there's actually a really good set of videos um, from strategy gaming dojo on that i'm going to mention him in every single tips and tricks video because i think his tips and tricks are vital uh, but just so you know there's there's perhaps always another way to do it i'm not saying my ways are good but uh, I've talked to people on how to handle the, these particular issues that I'm going to be talking about, and I've come to think that maybe it's worth trying the way that I do it as a first-timer. There's definitely more improved ways that you can do it as you get more comfortable with the system, but just having the balls to that very first time say, no automated air assist is kind of scary uh it is a monster game so you are responsible for hundreds and hundreds of planes and that can be a lot to ask this this whole thing on the screen where you first open it up if you're playing as the nazis uh looks kind of intimidating and you maybe you don't know quite what to do with with all your forces one thing to note as the Nazis you are kind of incentivized to just try to kill as many of the you know the Soviet air forces as you can early on but in reality the AI in my experience doesn't really make great use of their air forces except on the attack on the defense or in kind of a stalemate situation, they don't really use their air forces to disrupt you or, you know, do a ton of other activities. They will fly recon missions. They will fly some very bizarrely timed, uh, you know, air attacks. Uh, but when they have a very concentrated force, kind of the scripted moments of the game, the AI will really hammer you with their air forces so if you can keep them down and not wear your own guys out or at least keep a handle on your own guys it will save you a lot of headaches so the the main concept i want to talk about with the air groups is perhaps most useful on the soviets uh, but i will show it here with the nazi side as well just in case you you fire it up and you you want to see this what the screens look like so as usual with tips and tricks you want to use the commander's report and under the commander's report you'll notice that there's an air tab which is great for a lot of things but one of our most important uses of, of it is looking at the air groups instead of the AOGs the air operational groups are, are really just kind of your how you're organizing your planes how you're organizing your air groups it doesn't require as much micromanagement as the air groups themselves do now there's two main points you want to be concerned with rotating out your depleted units and resupplying the air bases that need supply and then at some points you will just kind of want to pull really low units completely off the line. So one way you can pull everybody who's depleted off the line is by coming over to, uh, I'm kind of going to tackle these in reverse order. If you want to pull everyone who's depleted af off the line, you come over to kind of the far right of the screen and there's a depletion status field. You can filter that on yes and you can also see that some of these are 
you know a little bit older or aircraft or just uh, more on the you know rare side perhaps maybe it's like uh, an airframe type that you're not producing anymore so every once in a while it's a good idea to come through this report and just check it out uh, if you are doing manual upgrades uh, I'm, I'm kind of assuming that you're doing that but if you're not doing manual upgrades then maybe this isn't as important I don't know I, I haven't played that way uh, but in this case where we're looking at turn one this is exactly what the Nazis will start with you do start with eight depleted groups now uh, of those eight a bunch of them are actually Italians and you know they could be depleted just because they haven't really activated yet they haven't started uh, deploying a lot of their forces they're still monkeying around in Greece and Africa and who knows where else the Italians are useless so let's kind of ignore them but you do have this one German air group the uh, one LLG one which is a transport uh, and this is supposed to be a, a group which is supposed to be 48 planes uh, but in fact they only have 11 planes um, so that is considered depleted but because they're transports you know it doesn't really matter if they're depleted in this case so it probably wouldn't make a lot of sense to pull them off the line but if you saw a whole bunch of groups that you did want to pull off the line for some reason you can just go to depletion status filter them and say you you don't want to kick out your transports you could also add a filter on type and uncheck transport so now we just have the Italian bombers and the, the Finnish bomber here we could say transfer and it'll automatically try to transfer them to the reserve theater box and you just hit yes and then next turn they will all be transferred to the reserve theater box now you can't transfer them back on that next turn it would take another turn after that until you could transfer them back so they'll transfer to the theater box maybe they'll get resupplied refitted you know get some new planes or alternatively when they're in the theater box you could decide to disband them or you know just change their aircraft type or something along those lines uh, and then bring them back in somewhere down the line i'm not sure how it works with the the other countries but i, I assume you could do similar things with them um, alternatively if you don't want to deal with transferring them back to the reserves and back in you could just disband them and then whatever planes and pilots they have will go back into the pool there's a another um, way that you could handle all this you could on the map send each of the the sm say you wanted to send one of these units back to the reserve uh, so like uh, say we notice here that we only have you know six uh, HE 126s or whatever the hell these are uh, these are some sort of recon planes um, say we only have six and we really want like 12 um, in this case two are damaged so maybe we don't want them on the front lines right now uh, and you just you happen to notice it while you're doing something else you can always click on them and click send to reserve so it's not like just because you are mostly using the commander's report uh, to keep yourself organized it doesn't mean that you can't also do it manually uh, while you're kind of doing your turn organically uh, so you can mix and match don't feel like you have to figure everything out with the spreadsheet you can just do the the obvious ones with the spreadsheet and the best way to do that is to use this depleted filter um, you could also depleted is only less than 10 percent of its available strength you could also instead of doing depleted you could in you could decide what like the threshold for a useful group is um, now that that will change throughout the course of the war uh, at the beginning of the war for example the soviets start with these huge air groups um, sometimes they have a hundred planes in an air group 
uh, and that quickly goes down. Uh, the game forces it to, to get smaller and smaller. Eventually you get down to like 12 for a squadron. And the, the Nazis start with a much more sensible number of planes in their air groups because they have a little bit more experience. So it's uh, a little bit less of a problem for them. But on the early Soviet turns, you definitely want to be kind of watching how many planes are, are out in the field versus in the reserve because it might be a good idea to pull some of the planes that are in the dangerous areas just, just off the line. Uh, I did try doing that myself, but um, it doesn't really matter. You're going to lose it. just a bucket of planes no matter what you do. And in fact, if you're playing multiplayer, I think it's better to just keep fighting. Just, you know, send the, send the lads out there. Sorry, comrades. They're going to get shot down, but they're expendable, especially some of the early war planes for the Soviets are very expendable. The The Nazis are are much less expendable. You don't want to be wasting a ton of BF-109s because you have a limited supply of them throughout the war. Um, unlike the Soviets, you can't create a gazillion planes. Uh, and you have you start with the best crews you're ever going to have. Your air crews at the beginning of the game for the Nazis are the best. And experience level of the air crew matters massively. So one of the other fields that I, I will often sort on is experience level because if you see this experience level tanking that could indicate that you're you're taking a lot of losses in that group so that could just help to draw attention to your less competent groups at the beginning of the game it's just going to show you that some are your allies and some are you because your allied air groups are vastly inferior to the German ones um but on the Soviet side, you might get a couple of air groups that are, are very experienced and they might be more useful. So it's a good idea to, you know, play around with the different filters and use them for adding pilots. Um, so that's another button that is very important. You can add trained pilots versus regular pilots. So if you see an air group starting to get very low in experience and they also are missing pilots, you can prioritize that group for experienced pilots versus another uh, group, which you might just give, you know, green as grass pilots. Uh, I, I think that's a, a valid strategy to explore. Not sure what kind of impact it has, but the idea is it, it kind of levels everything out. We're trying to get back to a, an average level of experience across the entire Air Force. Or alternatively, you could say, okay, these guys' experience level is just ridiculously low. Let's just either disband them or send them back to the pool. Uh, so say we, we filter on, you know, 50 to, uh, say, 60 experience. So 50 to 60. And this selects 42 air groups. Obviously, that's a ton. But uh, say we just wanted to transfer all of them back to the reserve. We could do that. We could disband them all. Um, we could replace all of their uh, pilots with trained pilots uh, as they become available. So that sets their priority level. Or you can just say add trained pilots and that will take whatever is available and try to force it into these groups. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using the add pilots button unless it's items that are already in your reserve uh, because it can uh, cause problems with reinforcements. Uh, but by all means, use this report for for management of your, your air groups because it is quite the chore on the first couple of turns. So with that, I will quickly show what it looks like on the Soviet side just so you're familiar with it. But the lesson is the same. Keep it simple. Uh, keep it very you know, streamlines, just send everything back to the reserve if it's getting really, really low. Um, that, that's definitely the biggest lesson I've learned. Don't try to keep it on the field if it's depleted. You know, it's just going to be wasting supply, wasting your time. So on the Soviet side, this is, I think, turn one. So again, we're going to go back to the air and it actually kept my filter on experience, but 
The Soviets will have a lot more depleted, 121 air groups, and the best thing to do on turn one, send them all to the reserve, or even disband them. I mean, you could consider disbanding them. Uh, if they have literally zero planes, then they, they might be useless. Uh, so you could just straight up disband them. Uh, 44 air groups, in fact, don't have any planes. And of those, you you probably have a lot of like I-16s, which are very old planes. At this point, they're completely obsolete. So these groups, you might as well just disband them. Just get rid of them. You know, they're not, they're not going to do anything for you. Whatever I-16s you have left will just go to one of the other I-16 groups. And, you know, you can deal with them as you get them. Basically, uh, some of the really old planes, like the I-16, or, you know, just some of those, like, biplane kind of things, they're useless. That They're not going to be able to stand up against the BF-109 or any other plane on God's green earth. So, so just disband them or, you know, send them out to get shot down. It, it doesn't really matter. Those are perfect planes for throwing on the front line in the beginning and just burning them to the ground. You know, just set them a high intensity, you know, fly them seven days a week, whatever it takes, just get rid of those hunks of crap, trash because they're only going to hurt you as the game goes on. Uh, otherwise, you know, you definitely do want to prioritize trying to preserve your uh, sanity as much as preserve your forces. So even doing slightly inefficient things, as long as you're staying sane throughout the game is, is somewhat more important because uh, I, I've found that psychologically in this game, you can get that kind of fear of clicking and turn, fear of moving forward. You don't want to get analysis paralysis because there's a lot to analyze. And if you start trying to make the optimal choice for every single move, you will spend as much time as I do on this bloody game. With that, hopefully I'll see you back on the Western Front or Eastern Front of the Great Patriotic War. See ya.